let's just get straight into this, shall we? I went ahead and sculpted another eye. I had so much fun with the brown one, I just had to do it again, but this time in blue. On my paint palette today, I've got burnt sienna, light blue, ultramarine blue, grey, and Payne's grey. So just like with the brown eye, I start off with a base layer of white and burnt sienna to make the pinkish eye white colour. And like before, I then put in the base layer for the pupil. With the blue eye, I do start with a much lighter base. So for the brown eye, I had pretty much just pure Payne's grey. With this one, it's a really light bluish grey that I'm going for. The main difference between the brown and blue eyes that I paint is the direction of the gradient. So like I said, with a brown eye, I generally work dark to light, top to bottom, but with a blue eye, I focus the gradient from the middle outwards, meaning it's dark in the centre and gets lighter as it gets towards the edge of the eye. The shadow that the eyelid casts on the blue eye is a lot less noticeable than on a brown eye, so with this in mind, I start bulking in the colours of the eye, starting with the lightest colours, which is a very, very light blue, almost white. I really don't have that much else to say about blue eyes, honestly it's the same techniques that I used with the brown eyes, just with a different colour. It is really interesting looking at references of blue eyes though, I feel like there's a lot more variation in blue than in brown. It might just be that because they're a lighter colour and you can see all the flecks and all those little stringy things that you see in the eye. I'm sure there's a scientific name but I don't know what it is. Either way, it's fascinating to look at, and I do recommend that if you paint blue eyes more than once, definitely try and find a different reference picture every single time, because you can get such variation and difference. I also add a lot of grey to my mixes when I'm painting blue eyes. I find the blue that you get straight out of a tube of most acrylics can be a little bit too blue, a little too bright, too much like a children's crayon, basically. So you really want to tone that down just a little bit, and the grey paint just helps to make that look a little bit more natural. And like I mentioned in the previous video, I like to add some ink to my eyes, and since we're doing blue, I'm adding the grey ink. I don't use quite as much ink with the blue eyes as I do with the brown, but it's still a nice glazing layer to add. And then again, I just rinse and repeat and add more layers and more layers and blend it all out until I'm happy. And now this is the point I'll probably stop on a model horse eye, that's good enough. Um, but because I have a bigger canvas today, I really wanted to try and add some more of those flecks and those fun little details. I basically just went back and forth with all the different colours, adding lines up and down, going in a circular pattern around the eye. And I went ahead and played with that for quite a long time until I was happy. And when I was finally happy with how it was looking, it's time to add the gloss. Again, just blobbing it on there, making it smooth, letting it dry, adding more layers, and we're done. Or almost done. I had a few people asking if they could have a copy of the eye medallion as practice for themselves, so I went ahead and cast this new sculpture, which I spent a little bit more time and I was a little happier with than the previous one. And I'm really happy with how the mould turned out, it's some of the cleanest casts I've ever made. So if you're interested in having an eye of your own to practice with, all the links and things will be down in the description below. But that about covers it, thank you so much for watching and I'll see you in the next one.